gentlemen. Morning. Good afternoon. Hello, yeah. hello. You did, yeah, I think it's about half three, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've been here since eight this morning. Yeah. So, so, we, so, we, so we're here at Driftworks. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't Driftworks. <laughs> this is not, it feels like Driftworks. So we're here at Diner Talk next door. Uh, pulled the Hilux project out, try and so, make a bit more progress with it. So we showed you a few vlogs ago where we were just waffling around Driftworks whilst Phil was swanning off on his honeymoon. A quick look at what projects we've got going on at Driftworks. So we briefly showed you this car. Now we've actually got a deadline. How, how long have we got? Seven weeks, eight weeks? Um, six, six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. Until? Until Driftmat Story, which yeah. is the end of October in sunny Anglesey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is James's 1972 Toyota Hilux project. It's fucking barely, barely registering that. It's fine, but we can put it up. Okay. You'll be surprised that is always like barely on, and then Al just does his loudest uniformity. Okay. Works his magic. Works yeah. his magic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, what is it? It was a 1972 Hilux, if I said that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> 1972 rear wheel drive Hilux. Most people know the Hilux is a big 4x4 thing, but this is old school. Why did you buy? I, this is, we like doing crazy things. Why this car? Why have you bought a 1972 Hilux? Mainly, I wanted a pickup. I want something I can chuck a few bikes in the back of, something we can have a bit of fun with, something a bit different. And this cropped up on eBay. A collector had bought it, shipped it over from South Africa, and then decided it wasn't quite mint enough for him. So put it up on eBay. And then you <laughs> snapped it up. <laughs> yeah. And then completely changed it and unminted it for now. Yeah. Well, so the, the more we looked at it, the more it was obvious that the brakes and suspension and the engine and drivetrain wasn't quite up to things and that modifying that to any standard was going to be quite difficult. So what we've done is chopped all the drivetrain, all the suspension, all the engine, everything underneath out and replaced it with kit from an MX-5. We basically, dun, dun, dun. basically <laughs> reshelled an MX-5 into a Hilux. Yeah, yeah Toyota a purist heaven. We're good at that already though with I mean, the 86, exactly. aren't we? we you're saying <laughs> that, we did actually look to try and find um, a Beams engine out of the Nantesa, didn't we? Because yeah. That was going to be the other option, try and keep it Toyota, put a Beams engine in, and but they are like rocking horse poop. Yeah. So none around. And then the MX-5 seemed to actually tick almost all of the boxes that you wanted to do. Yeah, it wanted a bit more power, looking for something kind of 200 thereabouts horsepower. Um, you wouldn't get that out of the NA MX-5. Obviously not straightforward from the standard MX-5. Well, right, let's, let's show what we've got then. Where, this is, obviously there's been a lot of work done to this already, but just give mm. us a quick rundown of what we have in the engine bay here. So this is the later VVT engine out of the Mark II MX-5. 2.5? Yeah, the Mark 2.5, 1800. Um, but with this, we've got a Subaru TDO4 Turbo. Really nice manifolds, that's the G19 manifold kit. That's come as a complete kit with the manifold, the downpipe, uh, all the oil feeds and, and coolant feeds and such. So that's pretty much a bolt-on kit. Uh, we've got an ECU from Motorsport Engineering, which again should be fairly plug and play, standard MX-5 loom. And that, that comes with a, almost a base map already installed, doesn't it? So yeah. You, you, we can do the run-in on that, so it's not gonna have to be mapped straight away so we can do the running on that and then take it down to them I guess to get mapped properly yeah. which is which is cool all off the shelf which is what has amazed me during this whole build other than this part of it this isn't all the but crazy all bit. of the, the turbo kit for the MX-5 if you had an MX-5 you can just have it all yeah, straight brilliant, away brilliant option so there's that then you've got a Dorenzo radiator um, and then where was this from it's just, cheap, it's just cheap eBay stuff so it's a it's a Land Rover Discovery radiator and a universal intercooler. Try to keep the pipework as simple as possible. Yeah, so you're going to have a real short um, turbo to intercooler pipework there, aren't you? Yeah. Which is which is cool. And um, Craig has made this space for you. What? Where was this from? Point to that again because the camera wasn't looking. <laughs> this this spacer here for a what? Now what's that, Rich? It's, like it's a master brake cylinder. Uh, is it? I don't know. What's in front of it? Brake master cylinder. For the <laughs> master, master break. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's off a uh, Nissan. Oh, a it's not a micro, but it's something slightly. Like or something. Yeah. Something, something, something like that. Just something modern and, and reliable. And then Craig has made the inlet as well. Craig and Ross has done that, haven't they? Yeah, we've had to chop the bulkhead quite a bit to get the engine in. Um, and the standard inlet manifold just wasn't going to fit. So this way, we've got the standard throttle body and all the standard uh, sensors and such. But mated up to a custom manifold. Yeah, so you're still waiting on the um, the cable for this. Yeah, that's going to need a custom one, but yep. we'll do that once we know what pedals we're using and stuff. Excellent. Very steady. <laughs> So this is the front end. Um, inside, um, a few changes. James is wanting to run a bench seat. Phil is not letting James run a bench seat. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, basically, James plans on doing a few skids in this. Well, drift mats are um, yeah, yeah. Those that have done drifting, a bench seat is not the preferred choice. <laughs> yeah, no. But you can also see in here that there's been an extensive amount of work to the tunnel and the bulkhead here. I um, mean, it's all a bit rough looking because um, it's sat for probably about, a m about three weeks, a month since the work was done. Uh, this will all be stripped back properly and painted once we've um, finished all the fabrication. So, um, Dino Talk, is echoey in here. Oh, yeah. is it? So, Dino Talk and Craig have, no, Dino Talk and Ross. Um, Hang on, no, no, that's no. Ross. That's Ross, too many people. Yeah. Um, so, this was originally a column shift. Um, so, the steering wheel was here and the shifter was here. So of course, with it being an MX-5 running gear now, we've had to make a gearbox tunnel. Yeah. Um, and so the gear, where's the gear stick coming up from? Um, at the moment, if you was a third passenger, it'd be right in your... Um, Bum hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere around about there. It comes through about here. <laughs> so um, me and Chris down at talk are gonna make a bit of a linkage to get it actually quite further forward so it's usable. Yeah. Um, it's a small cab though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't think is. I'd fit in, fit in that. Do I fit in this? You should, yeah. You're oh. a midget. So anyway. <laughs> so again, with all the MX-5 stuff, um, we've taken the steering wheel and the, and the column and everything else off the MX-5, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, the dash has been flocked, which is a nice little touch. So when the S... So is that being done by Ross? Uh, Alan at Flocking, fantastic. Excellent, <laughs> good plug. So when we got, you, the, S so when you, we got the, F the S15 dash flocked, we did a swap around and, and got all that done. Yeah. Um, are you keeping, what, what are you doing for dials? I want to keep the standard dials. I need to work out how to interface them with the, the MX-5 loom. Yeah. Oh, of course you... Got a bit of work yeah. to do there, but it should all be fairly straightforward. And then you're trying to have a, a, a retro looking stereo, aren't you? You don't want it like a nice modern double din, do you? No, no, I just want to keep everything simple and old school. So, switches and knobs and whistles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the plan here. That so, we're trying. Plan. So, what the issue is at the moment, but as you can see, seating style is here. And James is. Are you taller than me? Yeah, probably a little. So, James bit is taller than me. I'm five foot ten on a good day <laughs> and with his heels on there's yeah. not yeah with my heels on there's not much space no especially so, if you need a harness and that's well, going to that, be the real that, that's what we were discussing yeah. this morning with the bucket seat in and a harness you're going to be quite limited on what, what you can do i think we need to make an external harness bar but we shall work through that so that so that is one of the jobs that is going to be done ready for matsuri i'm going to get out of this yeah okay. oh. We're about to run out of battery, so whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. So here is the booty. Here is the boot. Just the fuel tank. OBP have just made us a custom fuel tank. Again, we wanted to keep stuff as simple as possible, but because it's going to be tracked and drifted, uh, needed something a bit more special. So that's a, a sumped tank, but also foam filled. And then we're going to be running um, an external Warbrick, is this a 044? <laughs> that's a, that, that's Can we just show everybody what you've just said? That's a fuel filter, Rick. <laughs> Thank fuck you don't work on cars, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> so what's that, Rich? It's a, fuel it's a power pump. steering pump. No, it's not. A, that's an external Warbro fuel pump. It's an pump. external <laughs> I've just been now massively. <laughs> oh, I've got a sad face. <laughs> How about it? Yeah, so we've got that all to fit next. Why have you got an external for this? Just keep it simple again, like simple tank, simple 
pump system. Is this going to be mounted under the under the bed though? Yeah, uh, that will mount on the chassis rail. Oh, okay. With the pressure regulator, try and keep it all in place. So just a single line to the front, run a deadhead system. Of cool. course. Yeah. I don't know what deadhead system means. Um, but the joys of this being an MX-5, um, we've, we've got the diff, which you um, is that a plated diff? So that's a torsion diff. Tors okay. Which would be fine for drifting. It's, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Good. But we're also running MX-5 subframes, front and rear. So we've got the MX-5 brakes, um, 4x100 PCD now as well. The issue is it's widened the track slightly over the Hilux. So these are a 15 by 7 and a half. Plus 35. 7 plus 35. So 15 by 7 plus 35 and it's tight. Yeah. And so that's already had a little bit of fettling, hasn't it? So Yeah. Yeah. So the next plan, we've got some work wheels on the way, some new equipped 40s. Um, and they're 7 plus 33. So even slightly wider than this. So we're going to have to do more arch work um, to get that sitting right. Yeah. yeah, and make sure that it still sort of keeps the lines yeah. the, the <coughs> correct. Definitely. Yeah. Um, well, we need to get it up on the ramp anyway, because that's what it's round here so for. Let's so let's have a look underneath. Let's just talk about You're a plonker. <coughs> well, what have I done? Three batteries and none of them are charged, so we better be quick. So, um, one of the issues with this being a vehicle from the 1970s is the heating is not up to modern day standard. No, no, it came from South Africa. Heating is not an issue there. There is no heater <laughs> supplied with this vehicle. It didn't come with one. No door sills, no heaters. You don't need it. Do you not? No. I've never been to South Africa. It's warm there. <laughs> so this is a potential solution, which is a standalone heater system uh, from an equally as old Nissan, almost. Yeah. Old school so this might be going in. Um, yeah. Going in. Anyway. Are, we, are these the tyres for sticking with? Yeah, so Nankang sorted this out with Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think that was going to fall on your head? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we've just lifted it up on the ramp, but you know, is it is it in any way safe at all? Do um, you want to get out from underneath it? <laughs> I did very quickly. I just whether the back and front actually bolted yeah. on properly. Yeah, it is because it's bolted. It's yeah, yeah, it's bolted. Yeah. It just it just had a little um a little moment. I had a little yeah. moment. <laughs> That's for sure. When we put it in, we we put this new box section in so we could bolt the MX5 subframe in into captives in here. Oh yeah. So it bolts in up into the floor as it would per normal MX-5. Yeah. So this um, is a good time to show you. So Craig and the guys here, have, because we put MX-5 suspension on a car that had a um, leaf spring set up on the roof. Yeah. Is that right? It's live axle. axle. Yeah. Live axle, yeah. but yeah. it did it also with yeah. leaf springs. Yeah. Yeah. So we've changed it to an MX-5 with double wishbone. So Craig's had to manufacture and get these wonderful plates made to make, make the HSD coilovers fit. So this has all been fabricated by hand and welded to the new box yeah. section. Again, it's un in its unfinished state. We yeah. plan on um, testing this and then doing uh, a full breakdown and yep. paint and um, powder coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This all looks horrible at the moment. This is all very much a test fit stage. Although it looks like it's nearly done. Once a few more jobs are done, the next stage is to just tear it all apart again and to send it off for paint. Yep. Yeah, painted. Yeah, painted. As, as with some projects which we've seen, Painting it before you do any fabrication, and it just seems like a completely backwards way of doing it. Um, so this is the power brace, power, power bar, frame. power frame, which is um, on a normal MX-5, but because this is longer, um, they've had to put two together and extend it slightly, so the chop is here. And this just, um, on an MX-5, because it's convertible, it's a lot of um, chassis flex. So yeah. again, gonna be a similar issue with this. So they've utilized, again, the MX-5 power brace. Why are you shaking your head? That's not why it's there. Why is it? I thought that was what it was for. No, the, the MX-5 is in the same as an RX-7. They don't want a gearbox mount. 
basically the, the, the gearbox and diff is together, so it's like it's almost like a transaction. Well, surely it sense. helps with chassis flex. No, because it's all water mounted. So that's not why it's there. It's an education. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always thought it was there. Yeah. <laughs> so but basically, we, we lengthen that. We're going to obviously lengthen the prop so it stays MX5 setup, so it should work. Yeah. As it doesn't. Basically, it's MX5 underneath, yeah. so which works very mm. well. That's temporary, just to support the box, everything where we wanted it. Mm. So, is um, the fuel tank going above our heads here? Yeah, it'll fit in that, that space here. Fuel tank here. Exhaust here. Obviously props are coming, but then there's not that much else going on back here. Maybe a spare wheel underneath, but... A clean... Clean, or powder yeah. coated and everything else. Yeah, it's going to have some new uh, bushes put in and everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah power flex, load of power flex bushes yeah, to go on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Driftworks, one of the biggest dealers of power flex. <laughs> 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 that's the... So yeah, so this, this is all the rear, but the front again, MX-5 subframe. Let me switch all the tons. Yeah, the front MX-5 subframe, again, heavily modified to make it fit the Hilux chassis. Yeah. And again, um, HSD coilovers have been fitted, so more top mounts have been made. Um, it's a bit of a difficult one with this because it's got the massive tubs from the, from the OEM setup. Um, we quite haven't, how are we going to adjust them? Or how are the top mounts on the plates? The top mounts, yeah, the existing Hilux had the, the top mounts for suspension as part of the cross member. So what we've had to do is replicate that. Craig's had some custom parts laser cut. So we've recreated the cross member top mounts so mm -hmm. the boiler's got somewhere to mount to. But the point is that we do these few bits of custom work, but it means that everything else is then standard kit. So again, all standard MX-5 stuff, standard MX-5 rack, brakes, coilovers, bushes, everything's available off the shelf once the custom work's done properly. Awesome. So, so what is it here for then? Obviously getting the fuel system done and installed. Exhaust, prop. D dry build, but if we, if we can get it um, on its wheels running, fuel system done, oil system done, so we can start it, turn the key, get you know water system finished. Um, burnout done. Yeah. Burnout done, yeah. So um, <laughs> get the pedal sorted, clutch it, make sure everything works and drives, and then literally try and have it on dry valley state. Um, break a few windows as, as you do, <laughs> Phil. No, we do not do that. <laughs> um, That's not me. Then, then if it works, well, when it works, strip it, powder coat it, tidy it up. Next week then? Yes, I'm like Okay, see you next week then. See you next week. So if you want to see more about this project and see how it evolved from the MX-5 and the Hilux to mate together. <laughs> <laughs> Do go on. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is slowly going. Is there somewhere people can visit on the <laughs> internet? <laughs> yes, check out the Drifrix forum and check out the Hilux build for it. We'll put up little URLs here. And there you go, check it out to see the early updates from, from when we first got it. Very good.